You see it from across the way. You look over, they look back. Could they be the one? Could I see myself in this relationship forever? Could we raise kids together? Is this the house for me? Well, like any relationship, you should probably start out looking for some red flags going in. It might save you a lot of heartache. In a house's case, a lot of cash. The markets of 19, 20, 21, and most of 22 did not leave us a lot of opportunity to look closely at homes before deciding to pull the trigger. But here we are in 2023 and everything slowed down just a bit, we could take a deep breath, and it's much more like back in your parents' day where you could like stop and look at a home. And I can totally hear my dad now in my head, back in my day, we used to look at a home before we bought it. We'd do inspections and we'd have appraisals and all kinds of crazy things like that. Well, we're back to that time and back to that market, and now we have time to really look at a home before buying it, so let's talk about what we should be looking for on a home showing. And this is gonna go from less expensive to more expensive as we go. Now, bear in mind, if you're walking a property with us, my agents are trained to spot these things and will probably walk a home separate from you so they can focus on this stuff and you can focus on the things that you should be focusing on. Like, do you love the layout? Do the updates match what you're looking for? But not all of us work with well-trained agents, so keep this video handy. My name is Mike Perna. I run the number one real estate sales team in the state of Michigan. We have over 2,400 five-star Google reviews and there's a Calendly link right there in description where you can book a time for us to chat about your upcoming home purchase or your home sale and how to net the most money. In addition to that, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you feel that this video can help us. Others. Let's move on to red flag number one too much scent, cookies in the oven, something simmering on the stove that smells delightful, plugins everywhere. The more aggressive the scent when you walk into a home, the more likely the seller is hiding something. Are there plugins? Are there wax warmers and candles? Take a good look for carpet discoloration. That could mean cat pee, which is just frankly a bear to get out. And look up at the ceiling for signs of previous moisture. That could mean they're covering like a mold or a musty smell. Or it could simply mean you're my grandmother and you love overwhelming scents and red floral couches covered in plastic like every other Italian grandmother mother should. Red flag number two, poor tiling. Take a good look at the tile lines in the bathroom, the kitchen, and anywhere else that there's tile. Look for gaps and cracks if the tile's une uneven, and this could mean as much as the house is shifting, or it could mean as much as this guy watched a couple of YouTube videos and decided he's the next Bob Vila. Now, if you don't know who Bob Vila is, ask your parents. And I just said that, and that just made me feel super old. It could mean that multiple fixes have been done on a fixer-upper property or a flip property and done by somebody who really isn't in the remodeling business or isn't a professional tile contractor and they had no clue what they were actually doing. They were just trying to save a little bit of cash. At the minimum, it means big bucks and labor alone to rip out and redo tile. Rarely do fixes with tile actually work permanently and then just recracks. Red flag number three, foundation issues. There's one truth about concrete. Over time, all of the cracks, driveways, garage floors, and of course, basement walls and floors. Most of the time, cracks simply mean the home is settling. And I mean, like there's a big thing where there wasn't a thing before, so it does settle into the ground a little bit, but there are two things primarily to look for, especially in basements. One of them is not gonna be hairline cracks in the basement floors. Those are typical. But if you can fit a dime in it, that's a problem. Also, a few vertical cracks in basement walls are normal. Again, if you can fit a dime in it, that's a problem. However, horizontal cracks in basement walls are not. Those may mean the house is shifting from side to side instead of up and down. Also, some tip-offs on oversettling are sticking doors or windows, which could mean they're just poorly hung, but in combination with sloping floors could mean a potentially huge project reaching well past $10,000 to shore up and fix the settling issue. Now, I bring a marble or a golf ball with me when I show homes just to see if it rolls on its own when I show a home. Now, it's not like Bill Nye the Science Guy proven method that there's a problem, but it's a fast way to see if I need an inspector or even a structural engineer to look more closely at. Red flag number four, deferred maintenance. When I'm walking through a home, I'm always looking to see if the owner didn't keep up on routine maintenance items. Now, stuff like burned out light bulbs, I'm really not that concerned about. Everybody has a couple that they've been meaning to get to and just haven't. I'm looking more for like long grass, leaky faucets, faded paint on the exterior. Now, long grass alone doesn't mean anything, but when your home is being sold, it's now a house, it's a product. Before you put a used car out on the side of the road, you give it a wash and a wax and a vacuum, right? Now, why didn't the owner cut the lawn or repaint the peeling paint on the outside to make the home look the best? it can look. These are small signs of bigger neglect. If they didn't do that, check the air filter. Does it look like the original that came with the furnace or has it been replaced regularly? That extra strain on the furnace will take years off its life, literally years. Check the caulk in the bathrooms. Is it cracked and old or is it in great condition? If it's a tub surround, that could mean water has actually been getting back there for years. And if you're seeing this just walking through a home, imagine what your home inspector is going to find on this one. 
Red flag number five, and this is for you lake homes out there, really anything by water. Take a look at the grade running to the lake or the creek or the river. It sure looks pretty, but is the water at the top and how far away from the house is it? Our weather has been getting a little hectic these last 20 years in the United States, and you always want to be sure that that awesome river you're seeing isn't going to be running through your house. Call your insurance agent and have them run an insurance claim report called a clue report, C-L-U-E. If you think for one moment there could be damage from water, but go ahead and extend that thought to fire or any other red flag you see. If there was an insurance claim made, they'll know and you should too. Clue reports will include the name of the insurance company, the date of the claim, the losses, the type of loss, whether it's fire, wind, water, whatever that happens to be, and if the claim was denied, and if not, how much was paid out. What it will not give are specifics about what part of the house was damaged, but it'll give you enough to go on to ask the owner for more information and be able to call the city's billing departments with rough dates for permits pulled to make sure the work was at least done to code. Red flag number six, wonky windows. Windows are expensive, like super expensive. I mean, call Pella or Anderson for a quote, do it. Yes, I went to the top of the line, but the point's made. I just had a 2,000 square foot home quoted by Pella and with the door wall, they came back at $32,000 for windows. Open and close several windows during any showing on a home that you like to make sure they're in good working order and take a look to see if they're fogged up as well. That can mean broken seals. Even fixing seals just is not cheap nowadays. If they stick or have several seals broken or it looks a little weird, it could be a DIYer that installed those or it could mean that it's time for those windows to go. And again, that's tens of thousands of dollars. Red flag number seven, mold. And it had to be on this list. When you're looking for signs of mold, I'm looking at cracked caulk mentioned before in the bathrooms, but also opening the kitchen and bathroom cupboards to look for signs of moisture around the pipes and the drains. Further, when your home inspector goes through, make sure they're checking the attic. Most of the time with attic mold, I found it to be a small issue, a couple thousand bucks, easily fixable, but that's not all the time. Typically in an attic when you see mold is an overzealous homeowner that added their own insulation and went right to the roof line going right over the soffit vents. There are soffit shields available at Home Depot for this and a good remediation company with a lifetime warranty can get it done and get it done fast and inexpensively. But then there are the big issues. I sold a home in Farmington Hills about 10 years ago where the owner bought a really expensive shingle. I mean like a really good one with a 40 year rating. Now 10 years in, he was selling the home and he could not stop talking about how awesome his shingle was. When my buyer had the home inspection, I told the inspectors Something on the roof just looked a little off. The only reason why I really looked hard at it at that time, that was a good reminder for me to look at things for my buyers, but the only reason why I looked at it is because the guy kept going on and on about the roof and it just looked off. And I'm not a roofer, it just looked funny. The owner, as it turned out, had his unlicensed and uninsured cousin put the roof on and they roofed right over the ridge vent. Now with a roof, hot air rises and a roof needs the combination of a ridge vent and a soffit vent to keep the roof moisture free. This is the most common type of roofing ventilation system, but it's not all types, by the way. This roof was not moisture free in the slightest. This 40 year roof, as it turns out, only lasted 10 with the boards and the insulation being completely covered with mold from 10 years of moisture building up. It was an $85,000 fix. Further, that's gonna be on the seller's disclosure for everyone to see for the next sale, the next sale after that. Red flag number eight, you're just not that into it. I see a lot of buyers today buy homes because they're 35 and they're feeling behind in some way. They've gotten the speech from their parents. Back in my day, I bought my first home at 14, saving my down payment for my communion money and doing odd jobs around the neighborhood at eight years old and working full time at 10. And for a lot of people, the American dream just doesn't include home ownership anymore. With remote work, I see a lot of people pack it up and travel in a van, do the Airbnb thing, or maybe they're just not ready or even into home ownership. So red flag number eight is buying when you're not ready because selling anything sucks. If you're looking for proof, look at your basement or your closet at all the stuff that could be or should be on Facebook Marketplace, but instead they're just sitting there going down in value. And Facebook Marketplace is easy. It only takes a few minutes to throw a post up. Selling a home and then packing up and moving is an actual lot of work. My name is Mike Perna, local real estate agent here in Metro Detroit. I hope that you love this video. If you got something out of it, please hit the like button so more people can see it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we drop videos every week and I'd be honored to get the call to interview for the position of being your real estate agent. Thank you again and see you on the next video.